Hi, Tony here. The good folks at Audio Plugins Deals asked me to give some impressions of a few products that are in their shop currently. And uh, I said I'd be happy to oblige. I'm a producer, recording engineer, and a drummer slash percussionist based here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I'm also a client of Audio Plugins Deals. So I'm uh, going to give you a bit of an overview on a, a few products that are in the shop right now. Uh, they are processors uh, to make your audio sound better. And they all do a great job. First up, however, is from the good folks at Black Rooster. And uh, Black Rooster Audio is based in Germany. They're a, uh, they're a smallish uh, company that deliver outstanding products uh, in terms of sonics, in terms of uh, emulating what they say they're trying to emulate, uh, in terms of uh, the graphic user interface, and you know, and how, how good it works that way and how good it looks. Um, they support the product very well. Not that they need to, because products seem to be pretty bug free, uh, very efficient, very light on CPU usage for those of us like me, for instance, I have what was one of the most powerful Mac that you could get in 2012. But that's still my daily driver in the studio. It's a 2012 classic Mac Pro 5.1 dual processor, 96 gigs of RAM. Uh, the OS I've got running as late as I possibly can with that machine. That's Mojave. I had to obtain a metal capable uh, graphics card, but it all runs great. And I look for products like, uh, like Black Rooster because uh, it does all it does so well and so efficiently. Great for those of us with the older computers. Today we're going to look at something that's in the shop called the VLA FET. The VLA FET is Black Rooster's take <clears throat> on a specific revision of, um, of the Universal Audio 1176 limiting amplifier. And that revision is revision F. Uh, it's an important revision because it was the last of a group. It came out in 1973. And uh, up to that point, uh, uh, there were a number of uh, important improvements in the performance of the, uh, of the device, of the hardware, especially as it pertained to noise. Um, the revision F is the last version to have an input transformer, a Lundell uh, transformer, and uh, but they did do a switch. Um, instead of the Class A amplifier at the output, they went to a Class A B amplifier, uh, which was very very clean, but had a lot more punch, and uh, that uh, helped reduce noise all down the signal path. So that's what, uh, that's what they emulated, and they emulated it beautifully. One thing they didn't emulate, which is interesting, as so many of their competitors have, is an exact uh, graphic representation of the 1176 in terms of what the knobs look like and the knob layout on the device. And uh, they said, no, nah, we'll, uh, we'll lay them out the way we like it, and I like it. I like what they've done. Um, it makes sense uh, from a linear uh, workflow from left to right. Um, and, uh, and everything operates very, very smoothly. So uh, quickly, uh, the first thing I want to uh, show you is the preferences button. Down here, you have um, a knob mode in terms of how the knobs operate underneath your mouse, I choose linear. Straight up and down or left to right. And uh, 
it makes the most sense to me. But for people who like uh, twisting knobs, they can do it this way. Uh, I don't think things have to be that accurate. Twisting knobs is for fingers. If you're going to mouse things, keep it simple. Keep it linear. The knob sensitivity, how fine an adjustment you can make. That's a nice, uh, thoughtful addition, but I use medium. That works for me. This is hugely important. Four different sizes of the GUI, which for those of us operating big monitors that are really high resolution, uh, I can't say this enough. Having it at the normal position, it's big enough, which is fine. But if you've got middle-aged eyes, like I do, you might find that having the largest size fits. You'll notice that even at the largest size, the graphics all remain sharp and clear, including all the text. Um, the, you can open the manual, which comes with it, and it's a superbly laid out manual with uh, very clear, concise explanations of the key features of the device and what each control does. Of course, it's cross-platform. It um, Mac OS or Windows. Only available as VST and AU, not as VST3. And uh, for a product as simple as this, there's no need to code for VST3, and all our DAWs will be supporting VST long into the future. Layout is simple. Power, which is an internal bypass. Link, which uh, links the stereo inputs so that your controls are operating each control or each um, each side. An external side chain you can read up on that. That allows you to do things like ducking, for instance, with uh, bass drums and bass guitars. Uh, basically, have another channel trigger. So instead of the signal, uh, the main input signal triggering the compressor, an external signal trigger triggers the uh, compressor. And uh, there are a variety of applications where that's useful. You'll notice that there's no threshold knob. That's not the 1176 style. Instead of a threshold knob controlling when the, um, uh, when the compressor gets triggered, the input knob does. So it's completely program dependent. And then, of course, you can... Um, compensate for uh, gain issues using the output control. There are actually five different ra ratio settings. You see four here, but um, there is a famous setting with the 1176 called the British setting. And that's uh, uh, when uh, Bill Putnam uh, delivered the 1176, he delivered it with four compression ratios, 4 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, and 20 to 1. But some enterprising British engineer asked himself, what would happen if I pushed all four buttons simultaneously? Well, you can have that experience yourself by just double-clicking on the 20 to 1 to give you the all-button-pushed-in mode. It's hairy, it's crazy, and it became a uh, signature sound for guitars and um, all sorts of different things. It's a uh, bass guitar, it's, uh, it's overdriven, and it's uh, for uh, so much music, it's glorious. Another uh, thing that you can do, if you double-click the 4 to 1, 
pardon me, uh, you notice that nothing is lit. Well, that's a one-to-one -one mode. And, uh, well, what's the point of a compressor that's not compressing, you ask? Well, here's the point. Because of um, the job that Black Rooster did of emulating the entire circuit, front to back, both input and output transformers, there's a certain kind of uh, warmth and dimensionality that you get when you drop transformers and other circuits into a signal path. So if you want that kind of warmth and dimension in that signal path, but you don't need any compression, just set it up like this. That's kind of neat. You have uh, attack and release speed knobs. The 1176 was interesting in that uh, when it was introduced in 1967, it was the very first solid state studio compressor. Up to that point, everything was tubes. And what the solid state devices gave the designers the opportunity to do is set really fast attack and release times and start impacting things like uh, transients. Um, the faster the attack, uh, speed of the compressor, the faster it will clamp down on initial transients that come from, say, uh, a drum hit, a percussive hit, a snare drum hit. And um, you can use these controls uh, creatively to come up with a different flavor for your drum bus, um, for vocals. Vocals especially, which I'm going to demonstrate momentarily. How fast it clamps down on the signal and how fast it releases after, uh, after that clamp. Auto fast uh, gives you an auto release that is program dependent. You try it out, see how it works for you. This control is linked with that external side chain I mentioned. Uh, this is a high pass filter, which allows you to focus on the frequency coming from the side chain input. For instance, if you're using the kick to trigger the compressor that's on the bass, you don't want all the round low harmonics triggering the compressor. You just want the attack. So you filter out those low harmonics. The attack of the drum is a much higher frequency. That's an example of how you can use that. A big view meter with three ways to check its ballistics. The input, the output, and how much gain is being re reduced, how much the compressor is actually impacting the signal. Finally, something you won't see on the hardware, a mix control. And this gives you a quick, easy way to experiment with parallel compression. And what that means is that you're getting a mix of dry signal before it hit the compressor with the compressed signal. And uh, from my experience, this further adds to the nuance of how you use compression. So let's show you one example of how I used it. We were working on a program, uh, uh, a quick little video plus audio thing for a, um, for a church. It's called Jazz Vespers. And we were working with the great Marcus Mosley, um, uh, a terrific gospel vocalist based here in Vancouver. And... Uh, and uh, we tacked on, uh, after the fact, some additional background vocals. And um, here's the background vocals. They're all assembled into a folder bus here in Reaper. And uh, what I, uh, you know, when I evaluated, the vocals sounded terrific. Yeah. Up in my room. 
up in my room, up in my room. So uh, they sound great, but um, what I thought would be the uh, the thing to uh, to really glue those vocals together and I just happened to have uh, this processor in for this review and I thought I'll bet you that would be great for this so I put it in the in the bus here and then uh, to get me started I used a preset called smooth because I like that description and uh, I made minimal adjustments. And look what happens to these vocals now. Up in my room. We'll switch it in. Up in my room. Listen to that. Up in my room. So the <clears throat> the VLA that gave me what I was looking for instantly, and that is uh, a smooth, glued together, uh, more ambient uh, background vocal mix. I like the way it uh, brought up uh, slightly into the lower mid range. Uh, texture in the vocals um, that well glue for lack of a better word and and uh, I'm not surprised because the um, 1176 is a go-to for uh, for a vocal bus by so many uh, engineers mixers and producers it and this device does this beautifully other things you can use uh, 11, 1176 for, drum buses are fa fabulous. And you, can, um, and you can set it to do everything from subtle to extreme. Run it across a lead vocal track. Uh, use it uh, if you'd like, if you're uh, in your final mix bus. And see how it, how it works for you there. Um, sometimes when people are looking for, uh, just some polish right out of the box for the whole mix, the 1176 could be a, your, your go-to. Um, and, uh, this one is unique because uh, as far as I know, uh, from their competitors, 1176s that have been, uh, uh, emulated are much earlier revisions. Um, their decision to go with the revision F I thought was a really, really smart one because it is a uh, much more refined pro uh, unit than, than the ones that came before. But it is the one just before they did something drastic. Um, and the big drastic dramatic thing they did in revisions afterwards was remove the input transformer which I'm going, well, why would they do that? But, hey, it's their sandbox. But uh, so, so that makes, that makes the uh, F uh, revision uh, pretty important. So this thing ticks off all the boxes. Number one, it sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. Beautifully uh, emulated. Number two... It's light on your CPU. And for those of us that are running older computers or just don't have the bread to go out and buy the bleeding edge in terms of, um, in terms of computers, uh, this is great to know that um, you don't need a supercomputer to run a big, big load of uh, these compressors all on one project. The interface is so well done. 
Uh, I like the contrast, especially for my 60 year old eyes. I like the fact that you can resize it again great for my 60 year old eyes i like the fact that whatever size it is because they're using vectored graphics everything stays nice and sharp i like uh that they decided not to just do a direct one for one graphic emulation of an 1176 but found ways to actually improve the workflow in terms of how controls are laid out i like the fact that it's bug free Whoever coded this thing um, knows how to do that. Um, it's terrific. I also like the fact that the uh, manual, by the way, is uh, easy to understand, easy to digest. You'll be delighted with that. My recommendation to you is to head over to Audio Plugins Deals Shop and see the special deal that they have for you. Um, because uh, at the regular price, uh, it's really a marvelous buy. But at the, uh, at the price they have it for, it's just a no-brainer. So uh, thanks very much for listening through. Uh, here comes the next review.